Hello everyone, I am Paul, your eHobby guy, and in today's video we're going to look at this FM audio transmitter. There's a microphone on it, it requires an antenna and power. We're going to see how sensitive it is, we're going to see if it works, and if it does, how well it works. So let's jump right in. This circuit is very basic and simply consists of one electric microphone, one transistor, one variable inductor, three resistors, and seven capacitors. Of course, there was no spec sheet for this, so I'm just going to show you the eBay listing that I bought it from. And right here you can see the polarity of the DC power that needs to go in. It's 3 to 5 volts DC. Um, because it was not marked on the board which one was positive and which one was negative. And you can see right here that I paid $1.82 for the entire board with free shipping. And so we'll scroll down to the specs here and I just want to point out that the FM frequency range is 91 to 103 megahertz. The transmission range is 3 to 20 meters so we're looking at about 60-70 feet and the power consumption is 6 to 30 milliamps and so I do have to attach a 30 to 50 centimeter antenna which will simply consist of a piece of wire and so I decided to go with a 50 centimeter antenna and so I measured out 50 and soldered it on for those of you who like imperial units anywhere around 19 to 20 inches will be just fine there's really not much more then adding the antenna wire and putting power, 3 to 5 volts DC, right onto the board. So I just grabbed a, a lithium ion 18650 battery and a battery holder. And I just got two alligator clips like this. I put it on the board, powering it up, and I tested it by tapping. And I tuned into the FM station, and it came in somewhere between 90 and 95 FM and it was really clear I actually got excited and so I said I'm gonna build this into a proper enclosure and then we'll get ready for a real test I'll set up a little test station tune it in on the FM station and then do a distance test see how far it can go while the clarity uh, is still good and so we'll just test distance and clarity and see how good it is let's just jump right over and I'll show you the enclosure I built it into it's actually quite quite a simple enclosure Okay, so I, I have some enclosures here that I have lying around to pick up over the years. Um, I was hoping for, I really thought I had a small one, uh, like a key fob style. Um, this is the same size as these. I do have to fit this. And I'll have to detach the antenna and get it outside the housing. And and get a this and a battery which is really no problem to get a battery into this maybe an on off switch we'll see what we can do and this pops open pretty easily plenty of room though it's bigger than i would have wanted but i don't want to wait I, you know i could order something i'm not going to wait i'm sure actually i have something somewhere but i, I i'm just too excited about this i'm going to move ahead with this one so let's go first and foremost uh, i decided to take the 18650 lithium ion battery holder and just hot glue it right into the box. It's that simple. I did decide to go with an on off switch so I pulled one out of my collection and I measured for the hole size that I would have to drill. It turned out to be 3 16 of an inch and so I drilled the enclosure 3 16 of an inch. Before I mounted the switch I wanted to solder red wires to the switch and so I tinned the tabs on the switch, the center tab, and either one of the outer tabs. I then soldered the red wire from the battery holder to the center tab, and a short piece of red wire to the outer tab. This red wire was only about 4 inches long. I then soldered the black negative wire from the battery holder to the board in the negative spot as shown in the schematic. And so now I am ready to mount the switch by simply pushing it into place and locking it in place with the nut that came with it and a lock washer. I gave it a little tighten with a wrench just to make sure it was snugly in place. 
Before I mount the transmitter into the box, I'm going to have to detach the microphone and put an extension so that it's outside the box so that it would be completely unobstructed. I first made a note on the microphone of which pin was the negative pin by marking it with a black mark. I then desoldered the microphone. I then soldered on about 8 inches of red and black wire to the microphone. Red is positive, black is negative. I applied some hot glue at the solder joint for strain relief and insulation. To protect the microphone and the wires, I decided to use heat shrink tubing. And so I wrapped the wires and the microphone in heat shrink tubing and shrunk it around everything. As a feed through for this microphone wire, I drilled a quarter inch hole about one inch from the on off switch. I then fed the microphone wire through this hole and soldered it onto the board making sure that black went to negative and red went to positive. And finally I had one more hole to drill as a feed through for the antenna wire and so I drilled a 1 8 inch hole on the opposite end of the housing and I fed the antenna through. All that remained at this point was to hot glue the transmitter board into the box and firmly pressing in place. I didn't know which position was on and which position was off on the switch and so I tested it and then I just clearly labeled the on position and the off position. That completes the build. It's really quick and easy. I just want to point out here that this uh, heat shrink tubing that I put on here it tends to just spring back and so I have this piece of just regular copper wire but it's a bit thicker. I'm going to tape it on and see if, it's a, if it can be of a help to make this more directional, point it anywhere I'd like. So let's see how that goes. Okay, here it is. Yeah, that's a lot better. Now it's, it's directional. I could lay it here and point it straight up, make it to the left, definitely it's more like a gooseneck now where uh, I, I can point it to where I'd like. Just a couple of other things you can see right here. I, ha I did pull the antenna back and I tied a little knot here so that um, it provides strain relief. Like if, if I was to carry it around like this, I wouldn't be pulling on the board. Um, this knot here prevents uh, any strain or stress from going right onto the solder joint there. Another thing I did, I used this. Uh, lithium ion battery um, this is um, goes from 4.2 volts on a full charge down to 3 volts at which this doesn't stops working at 3 volts anyway but instead of this if you don't have one of these in a holder you could use three triple A's which get you to 4.5 volts or three double A's like this looks like they just about fit in um, and just arrange the box any way you'd like so there's an easier solution than this because I know not everybody have lithium ion batteries lying around. And that's it. And so enough with the building. Let's get to the fun stuff and let's start testing. I'm about 15 feet away. It's going to work very well by separate power for the meter. Otherwise Getting a little static, still a lot better than I expected. Moving backwards, I can still hear it about a hundred feet. Uh, static coming in right now, just about legible. This is probably the limit. There is my phone right next to the transmitter and so now we'll do an indoor test and see how we do. Um, this is right on one end of my house. I'm going to just walk towards the other end and see how we do. So there you can hear my, my video playing. I have this uh, 100 foot uh, tape measure. You can see we're at 54 feet. With perfect clarity. Uh, of course, this is indoor. I'm at the full width of my house. So 54 feet, perfect clarity. Well, as you can see from that test, that uh, the results were, were 
a lot better than I had anticipated. In fact, the spec said, what was it, 30 to 60 feet or something like that, and we greatly exceeded that. And so it, it's really a great little, uh, little board. I am going to be using it a lot. I don't know about you, but this was really a lot of fun for me. There are a lot of applications that you can use this. Certainly you could listen to if you had a baby. You could listen in on your baby very inexpensively. If you are watching a sports game and you had to do a little work in the next room, you could certainly use it in that sense where you could just transmit the volume onto your FM radio and still listen to your game. There's another application that I personally am going to use. I can't hear my front doorbell when I'm in my backyard or when I'm in my basement. And so now I have a quick and easy way. I can just put this right next to my doorbell, turn it on and have the radio with me. And if the doorbell rings, it just gets transmitted right to where I am. So uh, it's, it's going to be very useful for me in that respect. I do want to say, please be respectful of people's privacy. There are laws protecting people being listened to and being recorded without their knowledge. And so uh, try and make yourself aware of what they are. Just respect privacy in the way you would like your privacy respected. Also, here in the US, the FCC governs FM transmission. I took a quick look at it and up to 200 feet seems to be acceptable. I am going to leave a link in the description down below to that FCC website. Please check that out also so that we're fully compliant with any laws. And if you're not in the US, check out your local and national FM transmission regulations. To wrap up, I am not lying when I say that as simple as this project was, it is probably one of the most exciting things that I've done. And I didn't even build it, um, you know, which is the thing. I get great satisfaction out of designing and building circuits that are useful to me. And so I didn't build this, but I was just so shocked at the quality and the price and how easy it was to put together. It was really great. And so I just want to take a second to thank you for watching. Um, really, it's, it's helpful if you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Again, thank you for watching. See you next time.